Hey guys, welcome to a two-part special of Around the Farm. Like a lot of you, I was unable to make it to Farm Progress Show this year, so we brought in an awesome guest host, Angela Sharp, to give us a scoop. And in part one, we look at what's new with FieldView and have an in-depth conversation with Director of Science Implementation, Tom Eikhoff. Plus, we headed on over to Precision Planting to see what those guys have been up to as well. And in part two, which will be out in about a week or two, we cover all the fun happenings around farm progress. I had an absolute blast watching all of these, and I hope you will too. Enjoy. Angela Sharp. We're here at the Bear Tent, where I'm going to go inside and meet up with my friend Tom, who's going to tell us about the digital farming experience. Let's go. At FieldView, we're all about data. And what we're really trying to show is data comes in all forms and fashions. Think about those bottom little trays as all different fields on Angela's farm. So Farmer Angela, why don't you right. give it a shot? Farmer Angela's ready to see what's gonna happen. Oh, whoa! Yeah, so so you can see there's there's a lot of different outcomes. Right, um, and absolutely. farmers are they have to make these decisions real time, every season. Should I make an application? Data science in combination with really good data allows you to play out a whole bunch of different scenarios and ultimately arrive at the best situation, the best choice for your farm. For your particular farm, which Absolutely. is the most important part because everybody's farm is just a little bit different. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Tom. Yeah, you bet. What else can you show me here? Well, let's walk over here to uh, this table and uh, talk a little bit about satellite. All right. So this one is eye-catching. What's this all about? Yeah, this is like uh, light bright for farming. Every one of these squares really represents what we call a pixel. Let's take this as an example. So okay. red, good or bad? Bad. Bad, always bad, yep. So let's find, uh, you know, here's an orange one. That's close. It's pretty pretty bad, but not terrible. Okay, So orange is bad, but not terrible. That's right. Okay. So right here, this, this area of the field looks like it's struggling a little bit. All right. You'd, you'd put that there. Um, green? It's great. Good, yep. Right here, there's, that looks like a great spot of the field. Okay. So um, imagine being able to do this on thousands upon thousands of acres, acres yeah. and really be able to enhance the decision making that you're faced with every single day. Real time, wake up in the morning, pull up my iPad, hey, how is my field doing? And it gives you this opportunity, again, to change decision making. Understand what are the underlying factors that are really going to drive a more productive season for you individually. So um, there's a lot of power in these pixels, but um, understand the meaning behind them is kind of the next step of what data science can deliver. Right, so we can make less red ones and more green ones. Absolutely, and you, you know, you always, you want to maximize production in those great areas, and then you want to improve those areas that are, that are really struggling, and this becomes the basis of how you change decision making on your farm. All right, so this is very helpful. Is there anything else that is kind of shows us in like real life what it's like to use the app. There is one more part. How do you pull it all together? Right. I mean, it's more than just digital. Why don't we go take a look? All right, Tom, I feel like this is what you were gonna show me. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is it. This is where it all comes together. Why don't you uh, grab um, one of those white balls there. All right, got and, a ball. and we're gonna start. we're gonna start this machine. So drop that right in there, slide that over. Yep, drop it in. Boom. And, and this is really where it starts. Okay. Um, the first big decision is genetics. And, and, and Bear Crop Science has leading genetics. Um, our breeding organization drives innovation like no one else in the industry. Why don't you pull that lever? Pull the lever. Yeah, you got to leave it open. There you go. It's coming. It's go. There it goes. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Here we go. So now that we've planted this great yielding seed in your field, we know the first thing that happens is your insects are going to start chipping away at that yield potential. Right. Weeds are going to start yeah. growing. So you need to have the right level of protection, and that's where traits come in. Um, biotech traits, things like smart stacks, um, extend flex soybeans, provide the necessary tools to be able to manage insects and weeds at a level that is necessary to, again, drive productivity and profitability in your own operation. So 
We've got the genetics. We've got the traits. What's next? Uh, I'm going to find out, one? aren't I? There we go. Yep. So it's going to shoot down here to crop protection. Okay. And now that we're protecting with traits, we're going to complement that with the industry-leading crop protection tools, herbicides, fungicides, um, insecticides that are needed, again, to protect that crop. And you don't just want to apply them anywhere. You want to be smart about it. You want to be informed in your decision-making. One more lever. Okay. And it's going to launch us up into this digital ah, farming. Ah, digital and, farming. And, and this, ultimately, Angela, is where it really starts to come together. Being able to have a platform like FieldView that's pulling all the data together for your farm, coupling it, the genetics, the traits, the crop protection, along with data science, is what everyone is striving for to be able to, at the end of the day, I'll, I'll, I'll grab this last You're gonna one. You're going to get that this right? one? Yeah, because yep. I'm yep. a little short. <laughs> that's right to get to the end of the game. Right, so you get it all kind of right here. I mean, this is hugely informative. Is yeah. there anything else here you can yeah. show me? Well, hey, if you have time for one more thing, you know, digital farming is, is a pretty broad topic and there's some really cool science behind it. We could go talk a little bit about the science. Let's do it. All right. All right, so what do we have here? Last stop. So okay. thanks for letting me geek out on the science a little bit. Okay, this is yeah. where it gets really cool. There's a lot of really talented data scientists behind the scenes using things like machine learning and artificial intelligence to drive these decisions. There is a huge database of seed genetics that we have access to, and it starts with the library of just all the information on our global breeding program. So that is the base of the puzzle. Second step, we've got research data. Tens of years to bring a new product to marketplace. We're testing them all over the world, all over the U.S. So we get not only performance data, but environmental data, research data. Next step, historical data. On your oh, farm, right, that makes you, sense. you've got a lot yeah. of information. You know a lot about your farm. You combine the historical data. Now, we also realize that, hey, we're not the only game in town. There, there's yeah. competitors out there. And this allows us to understand how does our seed perform relative to competitors. Oh, well, that we want, is most important for me as the farmer to know. Yeah, we definitely want that yeah, in the model, right? Yeah. We, want to, we want to be able to understand how that works. And boom, we take all this information. We start pumping it into seed selection models. This is really where the cool science is happening. It's taking all of these building algorithms and for all the information we have at our fingertips and saying, here's going to be oh. the best seed for your right. farm. Now, it doesn't stop there. I mean, as you know, not every hybrid likes to be as close to the neighbors as the next one. So you want to know how many seeds per acre should I plant? And if you remember back to those pixels, yes. we talked about the red ones right. and the green ones. The red areas might not need as many seeds. The green areas, we want to put a lot. This also gets pumped into the model, ultimately, leading to things like our seed advisor, trial advisor, that are taking all of this historic information, all of this data, putting it into a model and providing a recommendation that's gonna make you successful. I love how transparent all of this is and thank you for kind of showing me what, what's going on here. Yeah, absolutely. This is the cool stuff. <laughs> this is the cool stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. While Angela made her way over to the precision planting tent, around the farm correspondent, Josh Munkin, continued the conversation with Tom about the importance of research and development within the Climate Corporation. I'm Josh Munkin, R&D Communications Manager for the Climate Corporation, here with Tom to talk a little bit more about our R&D within the Climate Corporation. So, Tom, you are Director of Science Implementation at the Climate Corporation. Can you say a little bit more about what your team actually implements? Yeah, so it's, um, we, we get that, what I say, the coolest job in the company. Um, we get to work really closely with farmers in all of the research plots that are done throughout the company. So our, our focus is really, hey, we're doing a lot of really cool data science, a lot of models that need to be constructed to help drive our pipeline. And we're really the data behind that. We work with all of the R&D teams to run field research and understand how are these models gonna be built and how are they gonna perform directly on farm. Right, okay. So I know you and Angela talked a little bit about tailored solutions as a whole mm -hmm. and how important digital farming is to the tailored solutions. I know it's the final stage in that sort of vacuum pathway, but where does it sit as one of the four critical pillars among genetics and crop protection and traits, 
Wh how how uh, how do you think about digital farming as the foundation or or contributing to uh, Bayer Crop Sciences mission? You, you know, Josh, I really think about it as kind of the center point, and and to, you said it well, the foundation, because all those other elements, the genetics, the crop protection, um, the traits, are really parts that funnel into this vision of a digital farming solution. And as you think about how do you, how do you as a consumer, how do you as a, as a person in agriculture want to interact with decision making and how do you measure productivity, you want to see the results of all the different practices you have, digital farming is where all that comes together. So it's really the intersection of visibility of performance on farm, data science, and taking all of the great physical products coming through the Bayer R&D pipeline and bringing those directly to our customers. Great, cool. So let's talk now about the research pipeline within the Climate Corporation. Can you talk a little bit about the pipeline itself, the capabilities that we're developing within science and, and how they contribute to that digital farming vision? Yeah, well, I think you'd see is our digital pipeline is very much aligned with our bare R&D pipeline because um, what we're focused on is really how do we ensure the right genetics are getting placed on the field and how can a farmer best manage those genetics. So our, our pipeline is focused on how do I select and place the right hybrids or soybean varieties in the field on your farm? And then how do I manage them? Things like diseases, you know, we know diseases are a bit predictable or unpredictable and are dependent upon the environment. Well, we can pull data science and all the information around a field together to help inform you of, hey, is there some action you need to take? Um, is there something better, more profitable you can do on your own farm that's going to make you more successful? And, and that's really the fundamentals of what our pipeline is all about, improving decision making through data science for your farm. So I know that you and Angela talked about the puzzle that you put together with all the yeah. contributing pieces to uh, what it takes to put together a program like Fieldview Trial Advisor, Fieldview Seed Advisor. We're out here seeing the, d the data science in action here with some actual recommendations for our Seed Advisor and Trial Advisor programs. Mm -hmm. So um, can you talk a little bit more about those programs and how, how R&D makes its way into a program that, that faces the the customer and delivers value to farmers. Yeah, so I mean, I, I think about it pretty simply. Um, farmers are faced with a lot of really tough decisions. And to be honest, they have a lot of options. Um, there's hundreds upon hundreds of corn hybrids out there. So sorting through which are the best ones for my farm, what's gonna put me in the best situation to really deliver what I need is what these programs are all about. We have this robust set of data coming from our breeding organization and our market development organization. We really have years of testing. We know a lot about these products when we put them in the marketplace. Farmers know a lot about their fields. They've collected a lot of data. The intersection of those two points to be able to provide, okay, if you're planting hybrid A, how would hybrid B perform relative to that? That's rooted in data science and using predictive models, machine learning to be able to take in all this data across R&D, across field view, and come together with the best recommendation and in science informed recommendation that's gonna improve um, our, our probability of winning, and at the end of the day, the bottom line um, for, for our customers. Yeah, yeah. So in, in terms of uh, scaling up, models and scaling up those recommendations and ensuring we're getting wins out there. One of the questions that I've gotten a couple of times during the show on, on the first day here is how do you scale up programs like Seed Advisor and Trial Advisor? How do you offer those meaningfully to new geographies where you may need to do some of that market sure. testing, uh, do some of those pilots? You know what I think is cool about the digital space, Josh, is um, one, it, it, it takes data. so. Obviously, many times what you see is these products come out in areas where we probably have the most rich and robust data. Um, however, these models are smart, and as you feed them more information, they learn more. So, you know, fundamentally, you scale these by starting with a group of trials. Um, you see how it goes, you learn from it, and you grow from there. And, you know, I think about if, if folks are interested in how do I participate, and if it's not in your market today, how do I get it there the next year? It's all about the data. And, you know, um, FieldView is a great place for farmers to start bringing that together for their own farm, which then enables us to start to interact and bring the R&D data to them. And uh, it's, it's, again, it goes back to that combination of on-farm data with our R&D data that really allow us to expand in these geographies. 
So last question, and then I'll let you get on with the show yeah. and enjoy uh, everything else that Farm Progress Show has to offer. What should farmers be looking forward to, or what should they be thinking of as they use FieldView, as they think about digital farming? You know, I, I think of this as, uh, how are you a good steward of your own data? And I think that's the first question I'd, I'd ask a farmer. And by that, I mean, as you're collecting this information that you are going to value and use in decision-making, are you confident in what it's telling you? So simple things like product names and you know, starting to get it all in one place and actually use it in the, in the decision-making process is step one. And then step two is, you know, hey, we've got a lot of experts within FieldView. Um, we have customer activation specialists all across the U.S. that can help get folks connected, really understand what the product can do, and partner with your trusted advisor. FieldView allows you to share that information with your trusted advisor, whether that's your seed dealer or, or um, an agronomist. They can be a core part of this decision, and um, I think that's that's a fundamental thing. If if you're interested in this space and understanding how digital can really change the way you farm in your own operation, being a great data steward, pull in those folks that trust, and play with the science a little bit. There's a lot of really cool things coming down our pipeline, and I'm really excited to see how they uh, how they take shape over the next couple of years. Cool, Tom. Thanks. I appreciate the walkthrough of some climate R&D, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Thanks. You too. And I appreciate the in-depth conversation, and I've certainly learned a lot. Next up, Angela talks with Bryce Baker over at Precision Planting. Let's check it out. I was just talking to our friends at FieldView, so I decided to walk over here and talk to my new best friend, Bryce Baker. What exactly does Precision Planting do? Yeah, so Precision Planting is a ag technology company, and we just help farmers improve their operations. Can you grab that module right here? This one? Yeah, just move that up and down a little bit. Just shake it vertically. You can see this good ride number oh, right yeah. here changes. So that's a module that can be mounted on the planter as well. Oh. And as the row units bounce through the field, this shows the poorer ride. So if a farmer saw their good ride went down, down yeah. their singulation dropped or their spacing quality dropped, they would know, oh, maybe I should slow down. Now, can you work with the friends at FieldView and kind yes. of have both of those work together? Yep, yep, so there's a long history, long relationship, FieldView and precision planting, you know, go way back. Uh, FieldView is part of precision yeah. planting and through acquisitions and different things, we're now separate companies, but connected. And so the 2020 in the cab, there's a module that can be plugged in and then plug into the FieldView cab app. And the things that are being shown on the 2020 can also be mapped on the FieldView cab app. So in the high definition maps, and then from there can move to the cloud or wherever, uh, wherever the farmer would like to have their data for analysis purposes. And so uh, there are growers that run the 2020 and then right beside it, run the FieldView cab app and they're connected. And they all kind of works together to give mm -hmm. you the best options for your farm. I think the most important thing is to know that uh, how consistent emergence actually impacts harvest. So right now we're just ahead of harvest and a lot of people say, well, planting's done. I can't really judge what's happened. Well, a lot of farmers could go out and they could evaluate their crops now and they could look at just simple things like in corn. If you look at the size of the stalk, the diameter of the stalks, as you're walking, then you see one that's very small, very small compared to the field average. That probably emerged late, nice. all right? So that plant came up late. It was always behind. It's not gonna produce as much. And if they look at the ear size of that plant compared to the average, they'll see it's quite a bit smaller. And there are tools between data and some of these sensors that could help them improve the way the planter performs. And then they could see that feedback in the cab on the 2020 and on field view to know if they've made an improvement after they make an adjustment. And so it's never too early to kind of be planning ahead it's for the next go around. never too early to plan ahead. That's exactly right. Yeah, and I, and I love how everybody can kind of work together to get all yeah. the details that they need. Yep, Thank you sure. so much, Bryce. All right. Big shout out to Clint for letting me fill in for him. We had a great time here at Farm Progress. Hopefully I'll see you again around the farm. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. And a huge thank you to Angela Sharp for stepping in so last minute here and she has done an absolute wonderful job. 
And also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for part two, where Angela rolls around Farm Progress Show to see all the fun activities. And we'll see you. Well, wait a second. Sherry said that. Thanks for tuning in.